Yeah, I welcome you to the presentation on analysis of uh, determinate structures. Let us continue with the discussion on how to determine the axial forces in members of determinate truss subjected to rolling loads using influence line diagrams. In the last presentation, we had started with this numerical example uh, with respect to determining the uh, influence line diagrams for three members FC, FD and FG and then using the influence line diagram uh, we were trying to find the maximum axial force that the member may develop when it is uh, when the truss uh, uh, carries an UDL of 40 km per m longer than the span. Now in the last presentation we had finished the first part of the exercise wherein we determined the axial force or ILD for axial force okay, in member FC, this vertical member and also we went on to use that influence line diagram to determine the maximum axial force that this member will develop when UDL longer than the span crosses the beam. So today we shall try to continue the example. We will try to determine the axial forces or first ILD okay, for members FD and FG. Okay, and then we will try to just check uh, how what is the maximum axial force that these members will develop. Now we just try to recollect in my last presentation I mentioned that the influence line diagram okay the way we try to develop for vertical members and inclined members are similar so if you just try to recollect the discussion with respect to fc we'll be doing the same steps okay almost for member fd so let us try to start the discussion here my objective is to obtain the influence line diagram for this diagonal member or inclined member FD. Now we are trying to develop this influence line diagram okay, in three stages or cases. First let us assume that the unit load is between portion A and C and then it is between D and V and finally between C and D. Please understand influence line diagram is always developed or drawn considering unit to be load. Hence I am just starting with first in portion AC and then DB and then CD. We develop the influence line diagram through method of sections. If you just try to look at this we are trying to cut the truss physically okay, along YY. Once you do that please understand it should cut the member that we are trying to uh, uh, consider. So it is cutting the section, cutting the member FD. It is also cutting two more members FG and CD. I hope you understand method of sections. When we take a section, it should not cut more than three members having unknown forces. Okay. So with this understanding, I will be starting with case one, considering okay the unit load to be between A and C. Okay, once I cut, okay, I'm just trying to physically separate, okay, the uh, two parts of the truss, and this is how it looks like. I've just physically separated the truss. Now I'll be considering, okay, the portions one by one. So I'll start with the discussion. Let the unit load lie between A and C, that is the left portion. Please understand when we are trying to say that the unit load is between A and C we always try to consider the free body diagram of the other portion because we will be missing the unit load okay in the other portion right so since i am trying to draw the consider that unit load is between a and c okay i have cut the section i would be trying to consider okay the portion to the right side of the cut section okay why because i am missing i will be missing the unit load it will be easier for me in the calculations now this is a free body diagram of the right part of the truss which I am considering. I am assuming the unit load to 
B between A and C. So three members get cut. So you can understand that. Okay, three member forces get released. The only member force that we have in each member is the axial force. We have written all these forces in the direction of the member. We have written it away from the cut section. Assumption: all members are tensile here. If you get a minus sign, negative value, it means member is in compression. So apart from that, you also have reaction V B. Okay, acting up because it is subjected to unit load. Okay, so once you have this uh, information, and uh, theta is nothing but the inclination, okay, of force F D, force F suffix F G and force suffix C D are horizontal. Now this this is a square panel. Width is four meter, height is four meter. So obviously theta will be forty five degrees. I am applying the equilibrium equation. Algebraic summation of all forces in y direction equal to zero, with an assumption that upward forces are positive. Okay, there are only two forces. Okay, one inclined force and one vertical force. So I'll be having only two terms. So I have here plus V B plus F sub X F D sine 45 equal to zero. Okay, if you rearrange and simplify, you get F sub X F D equal to minus 1.414 V sub X B. Minus indicates the force in member F D is will be compression, and understand this is when the unit load is between A and C. When the load is between A and C, okay, this member F D will experience compressive axial force. Now let us apply the boundary conditions to know, okay, the variation of influence line diagram in portion A C. Now just try to recollect. Okay, the expression for F sub X F D was expressed in terms of V B. Why V B? Because we had taken the right portion of the truss. Okay, so the expression, if you just try to move back, okay, the expression is 1.414 times V B. It is expressed in terms of reaction V B. Hence, I'll be considering the influence line diagram of support reaction V B. So I've drawn the support reaction for V B, which is a right angle triangle. It varies from zero. Okay, at support A to one at support B. Now we have said that the unit load will lie between A and C. When the unit load is at A, the reaction V B is zero. Correct? What is the ordinate that we have in I L D right below A? It is zero. When the unit load is C, as at C, what is the ordinate? You come down 0.33. How did we get this? Simple. At 24 meters, it is one. At 8 meters. What is the value? It is eight by twenty-four. One by three is zero point three three. So we will be using these two information in the expression that we derived. Okay, in the last slide. So we have derived that F suffix F D equal to minus one point four one four V B, which is compressive. Now I'm just trying to use the boundary conditions. That means it varies between unit load A and C. So when the unit load is at A, the reaction V B equal to zero. I will substitute the value V B in this particular expression. Hence, okay, I get the value of F sub X F D. Okay, it is also equal to V B. It is also equal to zero. Okay, because V B is zero. Okay, even F sub X F D will also be equal to zero. So the ordinate in I L D at A is zero. Okay, now let us try to go ahead and then try to find what will be the ordinate at C. When the unit load is at C. The vertical reaction at B is 0.333 plus. So we try to substitute this value in this expression. That is F sub X F D equal to minus 1.414 into 0.333. That would be minus 0.47 kilonewton compressive. Okay. So now we have two ordinates. So one is zero and another is minus 0.47. This is at point C. The variation, okay, of the influence line diagram between A and C is linear. Why? Because this is a determinate structure. In all determinate structures, the variation of influence line, line diagram for whatever quantity that you are trying to consider will always be linear. Now let us try to go to case two. Case two is we are now trying to say that let the unit load be between D and B. Okay, D and B. Correct. I have not. I said to begin with A to C, and then I jump between C and D. I don't do that. I come to that at the at the next stage. Now I am trying to say it is between D and B. 
okay as i told you the load is now in the right portion that is between d and b i will now consider the left portion of the uh, cut section why because i will be missing the unit load when i am applying the equilibrium equation so let me consider the left portion of the truss so i have drawn the free body diagram of the left portion of the truss okay the member is cut at three uh, um, it, uh, this, this section cuts the, the truss at three points or three members so the internal forces get released in all the three members okay the first one is f suffix fg f suffix uh, fd and f suffix cd all these are marked as tensile okay and we have got the reaction v suffix a okay and here again theta equal to 45 degrees because it is a square panel now let me apply the equilibrium equation okay that is algebraic summation of all forces in y direction equal to zero correct so we have got one vertical force one inclined force the other two are horizontal you don't have any component in y direction so we get plus va minus okay f suffix fd sin 45 equal to zero or f suffix fd equal to plus 1.414 va and here plus indicates it is tensile so now we have tried to obtain how the force in member fd will vary when the unit load is between d and b and this will vary as a function of va hence i am now trying to plot the influence line diagram for va evaluate the values of values of va okay at the boundaries at d and b so let me write the influence line diagram for va i am trying to determine the value of va at the boundary i said let the unit load vary from or lie between d and b so when the unit load is, load is at d what is the ordinate so here it is 0.5 d is exactly at the midpoint of the truss so that means at 24 meters it is 1 at 12 meters what is the value obviously ordinate is 0.5 and again when the unit load is at b okay the reaction at a is 0 okay this is nothing but the influence line diagram drawn for vertical reaction at a I'll be making use of these two values in the expression to determine the ordinates of influence line diagram at points D and B. The expression that we derived for force in member FD is equal to plus 1.414 times VA. Okay, the boundary condition. When the unit load is at D, the reaction VA is 0.5. I substitute this in this expression. Okay, and the value I get is plus 0.707 kN tensile. Okay, now the next boundary condition, that is when the unit load is at B, okay, the value of VA is 0. You don't expect any reaction to be present at A. The entire load goes to support B. Okay, so if you just try to substitute the value of VA in this expression, so you can understand that, okay, the value of F suffix uh, as FD is 0 okay when the uh, unit load is at b now in between d and b the variation of an influence line diagram again is considered to be linear because it's a determinate truss now we have understood how the influence line diagram okay will be present between a and c and again c and d now we are trying to say let the unit load between okay c and d let it be between c and d okay so please understand okay when the unit load is between c and d okay the variation of influence line diagram will vary again linearly from an ordinate of minus 0.47 compressive which was calculated okay earlier in case one and again plus 0.707 tensile okay at d which was computed in case two so whatever we had got here there is influence line diagram at C and the ordinate of influence line diagram at D will now be blindly connected to complete the influence line diagram. So if we just try to check here, okay, the influence line diagram, this is how okay it looks like. So if you just try to recollect, okay, in case one, we said that the influence line diagram, okay, right, that is the, the unit load is between A and C. So when the unit load is between A and C, Okay, we found that the influence line varies from 0 
okay to minus 0.47 at C and with the unit load is between D and B the influence line diagram will vary from plus 0.707 to 0 okay between D and B so this is what we are trying to tell okay in between C and D okay we blindly join the two ordinates by a straight line okay so we are trying to say it varies from minus 0.47 compressive to plus 0.707 tensile okay in portion CD so when you, when you observe this closely okay the influence line diagram crosses okay the baseline so this distance can be easily calculated from similar triangles or rule of three it can be determined correct so here we have found that the, the distance okay from C to this change over is 1.6 meters or from D to this point is 2.4 meters okay so this completes the influence line diagram for force in member CD so you can easily understand that when the unit load okay okay is anywhere between point A to 1.6 meters to the right of C in this region okay the member FD will experience compressive force so the moment the unit load crosses this point that means 2.4 meters to the left of D that means goes beyond to the right okay up to point B anywhere it occupies okay so you can understand that okay the force in member FD will be tensile now let us make use of this influence line diagram to calculate the maximum compressive force that this member will develop okay when an UDL longer than the span of intensity 40 kN per m crosses the beam so now you are supposed to understand that okay we want maximum compression to develop okay the influence line diagram consists of both negative region and positive region okay so let us try to place the UDL okay over the entire negative region okay because please understand the intensity of load is always constant okay what we what can vary is the area in the influence line diagram okay since I'm I want maximum compressive force only I am not trying to put the UDL on any portion of the positive region because algebraically it's going to nullify or to some extent will reduce okay so try to place the load okay such that it covers this entire distance of 8 plus 1.6 or the front end of the UDL okay is at this point okay to the right of C by 1.6 meters please understand there will be UDL lying to the left of the support A okay which does not come into the calculation because that is not on the truss okay so first place the load properly okay once you have placed the load properly we try to calculate the area in ILD under the UDL so that would be the entire negative portion that we have here so we would be trying to calculate the area of this particular portion which is obtained as half base height okay so base is uh, 8 plus 1.6 that would be 9.6 okay the height of the triangle is 0 0.47 and it is negative that is compression so we now try to calculate the uh, maximum compressive force in member uh, FD so which is nothing but intensity of UDL multiplied by area in ILD under UDL or that is 40 into half base height that is half is 0 0.5 base 8 plus 1.6 that is 9.6 into minus 0.47 so that would be minus 90.24 kn so if you are trying to design a truss this truss okay to carry a UDL longer than the span of 40 kn per m you should see that this member okay will take a compression value of 90.24 it should be designed to take a compressive force of 90.24 however this member will also be will also develop tensile force so let us try to understand what is the maximum tension the same member will develop so as you can clearly see from the influence line diagram okay the influence line diagram is positive okay from this crossover point that is at a distance of 2.4 meters <coughs> to the left of uh, point D up to B okay the influence line diagram is positive correct so if I have to make use of the entire I have to see that I just try to take the entire positive area into the calculation so it means that I should place the load in such a way that okay the end of the UDL okay lies at that point 
that is to the left of D by 2.4 meters. Okay, and please understand the front end of the URL is far ahead of uh, the right support. Okay, and we, we are not trying to understand how long, how far it is. Okay, we are just trying to place the load properly. Okay, now our point of interest here is only from this distance 2.4 plus 12, that is the base. Okay, of this positive triangle, 12 plus 2.4 is 14.4 height is 0 0.707 so we are trying to consider the entire area okay that is positive area because i have placed the udl okay over the in such a way that it covers the entire positive area having placed the load like this we do a simple calculation to determine the maximum tensile force okay that member fd will develop please understand if the udl is going to move to the right further on okay the developed tensile force keeps on reducing but with respect to maximum value, this is how you have to position the UDL. Okay, so now we try to calculate the maximum tension in member FC, which is calculated as intensity of UDL multiplied by okay area in ILD under UDL. Okay, so that is 40 into triangle halfway side 0.5 into 14.4 into 0 0.707 it is plus, so which gives us 203.62 kN. So please understand when you are trying to design this particular problem, you have, we have seen what is the maximum compressive force, we have also seen what is the maximum tensile force. So this truss member should be uh, so designed or, or the area that you are trying to provide should be, should be so calculated that it resists okay, the value of uh, maximum tensile force and minimum tensile force. I hope you have understood how we try to uh, develop the influence line diagram for uh, the inclined members okay and how we calculate uh, the force developed in the, those members okay for some given loading condition you can also try to change the load instead of trying to say uh, the the length of the UDL is more than uh, the span we can also try to give you some smaller lengths and then you can understand use uh, reasoning or logic as to how it can be placed okay to get the maximum uh, area in, in, in ILD and then you can try to calculate. Anyway, if you recollect the discussion that we had in case of uh, uh, beams, okay, you can extend those concepts here to determine the value of maximum area. Okay, you can position the loads uh, in such a way that you get maximum areas in ILD. So we have finished two parts of this problem. That is, we had we have now we have finished. Uh, we have taken initially a vertical member, and then now we have we have taken an inclined member. So we have seen how to draw the ILDs and calculate the uh, internal forces. So both are very similar. Okay, the way we have worked both uh, members are similar. Now let us try to go to the next one. Okay, the next one again here is okay the member. Uh, FG in this particular case. Okay, so again we try to take the member, we cut the member. Okay, so we are trying to consider the topmost member here. We are trying to consider the topmost member for uh, for uh, uh, determining the influence line diagram. Okay, so we have cut, we have physically separated the two parts. Okay, now when we do this, okay, again we try to write the uh, 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 reactions okay so we try to write the internal forces we try to, we try to write the internal forces now here it is i would want you to uh, consider both portions of the uh, 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 cut cut portions of the truss because you are now trying to make a, a decision you are trying to make a decision okay based on okay uh, logic you will be choosing one of the sides of this particular uh, uh, portion of the truss for further calculation Okay, I'll repeat. So what we have done is, if we just try to check, I want to uh, start with member FG. Okay, I have cut the truss. Okay, passing the such that the section passes through member FG. Okay, so I'll be physically dividing this into two parts. Okay, and uh, the section should not cut more than three members. So that is fine. So I have physically separated it into two parts. Now I'll be writing the cut forces in the three members both in the right portion as well as the left portion okay so this is what I have, I have done now you have to observe this carefully and then choose one of the portions either left or right now the objective is to find the force in member fg so please understand okay i would be either taking the moments okay please understand for horizontal members 
we are trying to link the ILD for moment, bending moment, okay, to calculate the ILD for force in the horizontal member. Okay, if you try to recollect in the previous case, we did calculate the ILD for vertical force and inclined force by relating that to ILD of support reactions. We drew ILD for VA, we drew ILD for VB, we made use of those ILDs, reaction, support reactions to calculate the or to, to, to plot the influence line diagram of vertical members and inclined members. However, when we are doing it for horizontal members, we will be linking that with the ILD of moments. I will explain that. Okay, now if you just try to check here. Okay, so what we would be normally doing is we will be trying to take the moment of the internal forces. Okay, right about this joint that is joint D or joint G if I am considering to the right, right side. If I am trying to consider to the left side, I will be trying to take either joint C or joint F. Okay, so I will be just trying to take moment of all internal forces. Okay, about F or C in case I am trying to take the left portion of the truss. If I am trying to take the right portion of the truss, I will be trying to take the moment of these internal forces about G or D. That is the first thing. Next, we are trying to find the internal force in member. We are trying to find the internal force in member. Okay, FG. We are trying to find the internal force in member FG. Correct? Okay. So, if you want to find the internal force in uh, member FG, okay, please understand. Okay. So, if I assume that I am trying to take to the left side, I am trying to take towards left side. Okay. If I try to take the moment about point F, okay, so that FG term will not exist. If I try to take about point C, correct? So, I have, I will have two terms, one due to f suffix fg and another is f suffix fd so that is ruled out so if I, hence i will be trying to take towards right so when i try to take towards right so please understand either i have an option of taking at d or at g if i take about point g there will be no moment of f suffix fg hence i will be taking okay right side portion of the truss and i will be trying to take the moment about point d correct when i try to take moment about point d so the moments due to other two forces get vanished okay and you will have moment only due to member f suffix fg so for you to understand it is always better you write both the portions and then understand reason out okay which side should you consider and then uh, which point further should i consider it should be about g or d or f or c so in this discussion i hope you have understood that it will be right side portion of the truss and I will be trying to take moment with respect to point D. So having understood this, okay, so let me just try to take uh, the uh, uh, free body diagram. That is, this is one. I am trying to take uh, uh, the right side. I am now trying to take the moment, okay. I am trying to equate. If you just try to check, okay, so how do I do that? So the influence line diagram of axial force in member FG is obtained by equating the moment due to external forces, okay, which includes the vertical reaction and unit load, okay, to uh, when about point D with the moment due to internal forces about the same point. So basically, what I'm trying to what I'm trying to tell you is you're trying to equate the moment, okay, at D external moment to the internal moment. Okay, so ex external moment we write as it is as M D. Now regarding internal moment, it will be only due to these cut forces. So I want you to concentrate only on the right portion of the truss, only the right portion of the truss here. Okay, having these forces. Now, I am just trying to say that the external moment at D will be equal to the moment due to the internal forces. Now, as we said, moment due to FD is 0, moment due to CD is 0, and then we have moment due to F suffix FG is what we are trying to tell you. So, please understand, okay, when I am trying to take this moment, okay, we are trying to calculate the bending moment here internal that is moment of resistance is what we are trying to say so you have to have the sign convention what is the sign convention for, for bending moment sagging is positive if you are trying to take towards left side if the, if the moment is clockwise is it, it is positive now I, I would be trying to take the moment of fg about point d how do you calculate moment of fg about point d force in distance what is the force f suffix fg what is the distance? It is the height of the truss, which is given to be 4 meters. And because it is going to cost me an anti-clockwise moment about point D, I should take it as minus. 
So I'm just trying to equate the external moment at D should be physically equal to the internal moment and this internal moment is due to these internal forces. Okay, I'm trying to take to the, uh, the right portion of the truss. Okay, so the moment due to these two are zero. Moment due to F suffix FG is minus, this is important, minus F suffix FG into four or if you rearrange, we get force in member FG equal to minus MD by four. I'm just trying to physically write this relation. Once I write this relation, I am going to say that the influence line diagram of a force in member FG can be taken as okay minus of influence line diagram of MD divided by 4. I am just trying to add ILD on both sides, left hand side and right hand side and I get this expression. So how do we get the influence line diagram of force in member FG? Okay, first plot the influence line diagram of MD okay, and then multiply it by minus 1 by 4 for this case. So this is what I am trying to do. I just write the truss. I first write the uh, influence line diagram okay, for, uh, for uh, bending moment at D. So if you recollect our discussion, in case of simply supported beams, we have done this, ILD for BM. Okay, so this is A, this is B, D is at the midpoint. That is A is L by 2, B is L by 2. How do we calculate the ordinate midpoint? A, B by L. If it is midpoint, it becomes L by 4. That is 24 by 4 is 6. So the ordinate I have got is 6. This is what we say. First, draw the influence line diagram for bending moment D. Once you got the ILD for bending moment D, so we are trying to convert this to influence line diagram for axial force F suffix FG. How do you do this? You multiply everything by minus 1 by 4. Okay. So we just try to check. Okay. So the value that we are trying to get. Okay. Right now, the value we are trying to get right now is okay. 1.5 ordinate is 6 by 4 is uh, 1.5 okay is what we have got okay it is minus okay we've got it as minus okay so ild of force in member fg equal to minus of ild of md divided by 4 okay so this is how we've got the influence line diagram for member uh, F, uh, fg now unlike the previous members okay you got only one type of uh, uh, name, uh, nature okay every its entire compression so that means the force in member FG will always be compressive unlike that of either FC or FD where a part of influence line diagram was positive the remaining part was negative so here it's the entire thing is compression so please understand that we are trying to place the UDL okay right now appropriately to get the maximum uh, uh, compressive force okay in member FG okay so the next task okay having completed the influence line diagram for force in member FG Okay, we are now trying to place the UDL appropriately to get the maximum value of the compressive force that this member will develop when a UDL longer than the span, okay, crosses the beam, right? So, how do we do this? We place the UDL. The, the UDL is quite longer. We place it over the entire truss. So, once I place it over the entire truss, I can use the entire area. So, here, that is, I'm going to hatch the entire area. I just physically multiply, okay, the intensity of load by this hatched area. Okay, and that will give me the maximum compressive force that force that is FG will develop. Okay, right when this UDL of intensity longer than the span crosses the beam. So please note the ordinate. Okay, that is minus 1.5. The span is 24. So I now use the calculation. That is the maximum axial force in member FD. Okay, is nothing but UDL multiplied by area. So UDL is 40. Area is half base height. 0.5 into base is 24 ordinate is minus 1.5 when you just try to multiply or okay, simplify you get this as minus 720 kilonewton force okay which is compressive so if you are again trying to design this particular truss okay so you need to understand that it has to be designed to take care of a compressive force axial compressive force of minus 720 kilonewtons is it all right or 720 kilonewton so I hope you have understood how this problem uh, uh, has been worked. Okay, so we have arbitra arbitrarily taken three different members: one vertical, one inclined, one horizontal, and we have seen how to calculate the uh, forces in these members. Now let us try to go to another example. Okay, so draw the influence line diagram, ILD for forces that is axial forces in members EF, ED, and CD of the pin jointed plane truss shown in figure. 
using this ild find the maximum axial force developed in these members when an udl of intensity 30 kn per m longer than the span crosses the truss from left to right on the bottom card okay right so this is again one more problem that we are trying to consider so in the previous case also it was a through type of a uh, truss this is also a through type of a truss now there is a difference in this particular problem in the sense that okay there are no uh, uh, vertical members okay and it clearly indicates that okay the joints present at the top cord and bottom cord are not in the same line correct this is one important observation you have to make if we just try to recollect the truss that we considered earlier it was made of almost square panels or triangular panels or square panels with diagonal members okay so there were a lot of uh, vertical members and uh, you could easily understand that the joint at in the top cord and the joint at the bottom cord were in the same line now here you don't have this information okay so it is not present so that will make a small difference okay when we are trying to plot the influence line diagram and hence i have considered this particular problem over here so that is the lower panel joints are not below the upper panel joints okay and the udl is moving okay on the lower card so these are the two things i want you to observe right at the beginning okay now coming to the problem he wants you us to calculate the forces in member members cd okay ed and ef so these are the three members okay in which we are supposed to determine the uh, 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 influence line diagram first calculate the influence line diagram and then making use of it we are trying to calculate the uh, maximum force okay that that member will develop so let us start okay the foot to begin with i am just trying to make a cut section i will cut okay the truss okay physically uh, uh, i am using method of sections again so every time we go for method of sections when we are plotting the influence line diagram so i have to physically cut the truss into two parts such that the the cutting plane passes through the member okay in which we are trying to determine the uh, force or we are we're trying to plot the uh, uh, influence line diagram okay so we are starting with member ef uh, you can start with any member i am starting with member ef okay so uh, the cutting plane passes through that and along with that okay the cutting plane also is extended it also cut get i mean it also cuts members ed and cd so you should understand and note that not more than 3 members should cut or or member not more than 3 unknown members uh, or members having unknown forces should get cut or in the sense that you can cut four members there is no problem but the number of unknown forces should be only 3 that's what we try to tell you because the number of equilibrium equations available for us is only 3 that's the intention correct so we are trying to consider the uh, cutting plane is it all right okay is what we are trying to uh, tell you in this particular case right okay now and one more observation okay that which i skipped i guess okay so ef is a horizontal member okay and this member is not carrying the unit the, the load directly okay so where is the load load is on the bottom card okay whereas we are considering the top card ef correct and ef is not subject to moving unit load directly correct and then we are trying to consider this is an observation i wanted to make in this case especially in this case okay where the uh, joints in the top cord and bottom cord are not one below other or one above the other so now i have cut the truss okay right i have divided two parts okay now you are trying to see this okay i have got two cut portions okay so one uh, left of the cutting plane and then i have i have got one to the right of the cutting plane so basically i am trying to separate okay the two trusses so as uh, we discussed earlier as we discussed earlier so please understand okay so we will be this is a horizontal member so the way in which we are trying to obtain the influence line diagram for a horizontal member is the same so whenever you are doing the influence line diagram for horizontal members we always connect that to the bending moments we always connect it to the bending moment correct so in which case we would be trying to plot the influence line diagram of a uh, moment at some point and we'll be scaling it down by some value which you are trying to understand correct so this is a horizontal member so i will be trying to uh, draw the influence line diagram for uh, the moment at some point and then scale it down by some value to get the influence line diagram of axial force in member ef okay 
Now I am just trying to write the uh, 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 internal forces. Okay, I have slightly separated. I have written the internal forces in the right portion of the truss. I have written the uh, internal forces in the left portion of the truss. So look at this. Okay, so this is F sub X E F, F sub X E D, F sub X C D. The internal forces in these three cut members. Similarly, F sub X E F, F sub X C D, and F sub X C D. The internal forces in these cut members. And understand always we write them as tensile, that is away from the cut section. Correct. Now the point of interest is E F. I want E F. Okay. So option one. I can uh, let me take let me try the left part of the truss. If I try to take the left part of the truss, if I uh, try and take the moment of internal force about point C, so please understand this moment is zero. However, okay, there will be expression where I will be having uh, both F E F and F E D. So this is ruled out. So if I just try to take this particular point, okay, so moment due to F is F is of C F, it will be zero. So again, that is ruled out. Okay. Now let me try to let me try to take towards right. Let me try take towards right. One second. Okay. Yeah. Sorry about the battery. Okay. So let me take towards the right portion. Let me take towards the right portion of the truss. When I'm trying to take the right portion of the truss. Okay. If I try to take the moment about point F. If I try to take moment about point F. Okay. Moment due to F suffix C F is zero. Okay. However, if I try to take moment about D. Okay, please understand. The, there will be no moment due to these two forces. There will be moment only due to this, and this is the right thing that we have to do. So you can just reason out. Okay, whether am I taking to the left portion or right portion? Okay, and if I try to take about this point, what is it I get? If I try to take about point E, what is it I get? If I'm trying to take about right portion, if I take about point F, what is it I get? If I try to take about point E, what is it you get? So physically, we have understood that. Okay, that we have to take the right portion of the truss. And you will be taking the moment about point D. Having understood this, then we equate the moment with respect to the external moment about point D with the internal moments, okay, or moments due to internal forces about point D. So that means I'll be equating moment at point D, external moment, to the moment of these forces about point D. I'll be just taking only the right portion of the truss, okay. So having said that, having said that, okay. So if I just try to Uh, say M D equal to moment due to uh, F C D zero, moment due to force E D equal to zero. I'll have moment only due to E F. You are talking about internal bend, internal moment of resistance. So that sign convention should be applied. Sign convention is what, as we just discussed. Okay, sagging is positive. Sagging is positive. Okay, right. So I'm trying to take towards left. So that means clockwise is positive. So the moment due to F suffix E F about point D is anti-clockwise. Hence, it becomes negative. So, how do we get the moment of F sub X C F with respect to D? Force in distance. What is the force? F sub X C F. Line of action is horizontal. So that means height of the truss here is 3.464. How did you determine? Okay, please understand. Each panel is uh, uh, 4 meters here. Correct. So, uh, at the it's an equilateral triangle. You can easily calculate the height. It is 3.464. So the moment due to F sub X C F about point D is F sub X C F into 3.464 with a negative sign. So rearrange, you get F sub X E F equal to minus M D by 3.464. So on the left hand side we got the force, on the right hand side we got the moment. So we are going to convert this relation in terms of influence line diagram. So if you replace M D as influence line diagram of M D, you will get influence line diagram of E F. So we are trying to say. I L T of force in member E F is equal to axial force E F is equal to minus of influence line diagram of M D by 3.464. So what you need to understand is first we need to plot the influence line diagram for M D and then scale it down by 3.464. You divide and with that convert it to negative sign. You get the influence line diagram of axial force in member E F. So if you just try to check, I am now writing the influence line diagram. Okay, for bending moment at D. Okay, right. So uh, I think you know about this. Okay, so again, this, in this case also, it happens that D is at the midpoint. Okay, so total span is 16 meters. Okay, so this is 8 meters, and this is again 8 meters. Okay, L by 2 or L by 2. Okay, so how do we get AB by L? It is L by 4. Okay, if if D is the mid span. Okay, so divide uh, that is 16 by uh, uh, 4. Okay, it's 4. 
and we have got the ordinate here as 4. Now once you have got the influence line diagram for bending moment D, we are trying to modify that to get the influence line diagram of the axial force in member EF. Okay, so what we are trying to do here is ILD of MD divided by 3.464 with a negative sign. So this is positive, please understand the influence line diagram for MD is positive whereas the influence line diagram for F suffix EF is negative. Okay, so this is for axial force that means compression. So you divide 4 divided by 3.464 you get it as 1 point okay 155 that is ordinate that we have got here okay so we join the uh, ordinate to the ends okay of this baseline you have got the influence line diagram for force in member okay ef now one important thing that you need to understand here is again okay this uh, uh, does not have uh, two parts in the sense positive part and negative part just like one of the uh, last uh, cases or, or members that we studied in the last uh, problem okay so the entire uh, uh, ild is negative correct so that means uh, uh, the the member that we are considering is uh, the top card ef please understand the truss is very similar to a beam right so we just try to take a beam and try to bend it okay applying a load from the top you can understand that all the top fibers are in compression and the bottom fibers are in tension here also you can understand that the top cards okay obviously are in compression and the bottom cards will be in tension okay so you can just try to connect okay the concepts okay from truss to beam and then understand okay that how exactly uh, the the stresses will develop or the forces will develop okay in these kind of uh, structures now having understood having got the influence line diagram for uh, the axial force in member ef okay now let us try to make use of this okay to determine the maximum compression okay that this member will develop when uh, when the given udl of 30 kn per m okay longer than the span passes the uh, bridge okay so again the given loading condition is very simple is it all right so he says the length of the udl is more than the span so uh, the option is uh, uh, it's possible for us to cover the entire area of the influence line diagram so i'm to, to do that i would be trying to place the udl over the entire span right from a to b as you are seeing here okay so the udl is spread over the entire span okay ab the, the udl also spreads okay beyond uh, uh, outside the supports but please understand that is of no use to us or it will not influence the forces in the truss okay that is not uh, really required so we have spread it over the entire uh, span and once you have done this please understand okay we can try to get the hatched portion i have hatched the entire uh, influence line diagram okay and how now i can just try to multiply the intensity i uh, am uh, multiplied by the area under the udl which is nothing but the entire ild diagram is what i would be considering so the next part is this okay so we try to say maximum axial force in member ef is equal to uh, is equal to intensity of udl multiplied by area in ild under udl or that is 30 is the intensity of udl multiplied by triangle half base height okay half is 0.5 uh, span is 16 base and the ordinate in ild for axial force 1.155 with a negative sign and that will give us minus 277.2 kilonewton compression okay so this is what we have done okay so we have plotted the influence line diagram for ef and then we have made use of it to calculate the force that it will develop okay that that the force that remember will, will be will develop when a given load moves on the beam for example for the same problem if i had said uh, we have an udl of uh, 30 kn per m of only uh, 4 meters is it all right which crosses the beam right so up to the development of udl it is the same the only thing is how you place the load is what you are trying to understand how you place the load correct so you will be placing the load such that uh, uh, you get maximum area in your uh, influence line diagram the influence line diagram drawn is symmetric so you can see to it that you just try to have two meters to the right of d okay here and two meters to the left of d and try to take the maximum area okay in this particular portion so again intensity multiplied by area okay will give you the uh, maximum uh, compressive force that this member will develop when a udl of 30 kn per m of length say 4 meters crosses the beam correct however if the uh, loading is unsymmetric 
or sorry, sorry uh, ILD is unsymmetric, so you can use that concept. Okay, so the section should divide the UDL in the same ratio as it divides the span. So we have done that in our uh, beam problem. You can use the same concepts, extend the same concepts. Okay, to even uh, to these kind of problems and then place the uh, UDLs appropriately. Okay, and then calculate the desired quantities. So I think uh, we have finished only one ex one part of the, the one, one, one objective of this particular uh, problem that is uh, uh, we have calculated the axial force or plotted the ILD for one of the uh, three members uh, okay we have two more uh, we will try to uh, discuss that okay in the next class.